Welcome back, everyone. Twishes here, and a very happy Friday to you all. I'm definitely looking forward to a nice long weekend, that's for sure. Gonna be participating in a Friends Hot Ones challenge, so wish me luck on that. Should be a gas, that's for sure. Not looking forward to the bomb. If you've ever had that, you know exactly what I am talking about. But it should be a fun time regardless. Today, though, we have some McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse figures to talk about. Now, keep in mind, these were all revealed at this past week's New York Comic Con event. And that's one thing I will say about the McFarlane Toys panel, of which you can watch on my YouTube channel. I also go over everything. It's all up there. I'll put the links, yada, yada. But I really wish they would have taken a little bit more time to talk about each of the products, especially superpowers and DC Multiverse and Batman the Animated Series and all that fun stuff, and have it be less the Todd show. And I think if you watch the panel or if you've ever been to a panel, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I love his stories. It's great to hear about all that. But he has his own panel. Let's talk about the products and the products that McFarlane Toys are putting out. If he wants to reveal them and then have everyone who works on the toys talk about it, that's what I want to see. The marketing people, the design people, I want to hear what they have to say. I don't really care about hearing what Todd McFarlane has to say because he's clearly just the front man. He's the guy that's like, hey, this is cool, this is cool, right? Yes, they're cool, but I want to hear the design process and what these characters mean to everyone who's working on the line. That's what I want to see, McFarland Toys. Please do that for everything 2025 when you have panels, for the love of God. Please do that. And right before we get started, as always, if you are interested in anything we're going to be talking about here today, I will have affiliate pre-order links down in the description below. Places like Amazon, Entertainment Earth, GameStop, you know it, you loves it. Pick your poison. Thank you so much for using my links. It helps the channel to grow. Now, Justice League Task Force. Who remembers that video game, huh? Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, anyone? Anyone? Of course, I definitely remember it. Of course, I have the game. But I can't say that it's one that it's like, oh man, I can't wait until they make action figures based off this property. But it is kind of fun. It's in that realm of how I feel about, let's say, Batman and Robin. Those kind of, those movies where you're like, oh, it just wasn't great when we were kids, and it still is not great, but it has that odd nostalgia where you see the action figures, and you're like, those are pretty cool. So it kind of plays into that. If anything about Justice League Task Force, I remember the artwork in the comic books when they were promoting it. Hey, the big splash page of Batman, a Superman, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Justice League Task Force, play it. It's kind of like a Mortal Kombat game with all the DC Comics characters, of which you're technically fighting Android versions of each other. But then the big baddie is, of course, Darkseid. So go figure, right? But we have a new action figure line based off that, which is kind of cool. Again, falling into that Batman and Robin realm of nostalgia where you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see people who have no idea what I'm talking about go, yeah, you know, I guess maybe kind of sort of. The Flash. I like the body type. I do like the head portrait better than the kind of promo shots that they posted at New York Comic Con. I like, for the most part, let's say from these photos, again, always reserve judgment till they're in hand. When it comes to video game deco, sort of that 8-bit, 16-bit, digital, square, blocky kind of paint job, these kind of have it, they kind of succeed at it, and it kind of doesn't at the same time. There are still problems with these figures with the hands, like the Flash, for instance, has a trigger finger hand. Overall, we'll say this. I think the Flash comes across as one of the better ones of this line, as you'll soon see. I like the power effects. That's kind of what you have to do with a video game. You kind of have to give them blast effects and things that wouldn't normally come with a superhero per se, but it works in that sort of power up kind of way. And for that alone, I appreciate it. But yeah, changing the hands, see these are little details where 
on top of, I don't really like this. I don't know the property. I don't really like what you've done here with the deco. And then you have the hands and you go, this is kind of a mess. Just kind of reissuing things for the sake of reissuing things with a new paint job. So that's where you kind of lose people. And you lose people like me as well, where you're like, well, I have a million flashes already. What do I need for this one? Oh, I remember that video game. Oh, I remember playing it. Oh, I remember it not being that great. <laughs> it's, it's a very mediocre game if anything. But the Flash, I am interested in. We'll kind of see how it goes as we uh, get to going here. These should be out relatively soon. I would not be surprised if you see these probably within the next two, two and a half weeks. No joke. But the boxes are interesting. You got the Justice League Task Force, all that. Very reminiscent of the artwork, the colors, yada yada. So if you need the Flash, you can pre-order him now. Superman is the next one. Oh, wait, did I mention that there will be Platinum Editions for every single figure in this wave? Yes. Now, I have been asked not to show the photos. They're not 100% complete just yet. However, I'm going to point this out. I kind of like the Platinum Editions a whole heck of a lot more, and I can see a lot more people going, hmm... That's very interesting. So wait to see more on that it's coming soon. But for me, I think the Platinum Editions are cool. Or even in the sense of if you're a big fan of the Task Force and you're all over these, you're definitely going to want the Platinum ones because they're kind of kind of cool, especially the dark side one, which hopefully you'll soon see. More on that later, I promise. But Superman himself, that is one ugly head portrait. <laughs> We all see it. We can all say it. We can all agree on that. He's got the long hair. This is where the body type is great. You got the cape. The coloring, I like that digital look for the Superman. I like it. So that's that's totally fine. He has fisted hands as a fighter Superman in a Mortal Kombat-esque game should have. You expect him to punch and kick, and you've got it right there. The head portrait is god-awful. <laughs> But I have that other long hair head portrait that we got in a previous release, and that's going to go on there because it looks a million times better. It's the Superman Action Comics 1000. They put the long 90s hair mullet. It's a mullet. Let's, we're not getting to that again. It is a mullet all day. But yes, I don't mind this, minus the head <laughs> portrait. He, too, has some video game effects. He's got some legs for some reason. More on that in just a few. I like the Superman again. I like the colors, I like the body type that they've chosen. That's the Earth 2 body. That's a lot more endearing for a Superman. Trust me on that. I have the Crisis one. That's the one that I use. He's a lot bigger buffer as Superman should be. So all packaged up, ready to go. Minus that head portrait. Heck yeah. That looks like a cool looking Superman. Then you got... <laughs> You got Farrah Fawcett here. Whatever I'm looking at, McFarlane Toys. Come here. <laughs> it's like that guy on, on Instagram and TikTok. C come here. Come here for a second. Why? Why? Why not? Okay. Where's the extra head portrait in the box? We'll just say that. That's totally fine and dandy to have the windswept Farrah Fawcett hair. Sure. By all means, put that in there. But... He's just standing there. It's like, okay, you're telling me Dark Side dropped in, boom, final boss, all the winds blow, and then Aquaman's just standing there. Ugh, he's like a walking, talking herbal essences commercial. The coloring, the body type, I'm not a huge fan of the Aquaman body type. I really wish that they would fix that. It's around the crotch piece to the legs. He's very awkward, but I like the coloring that they got on him. The greens to the golds, oranges. The subtle shading, the 8-bit shade, it's cool. I like it. I totally dig it. He's got that wonky trident again. That thing looks all <laughs> bendy, right? So that's, even in the box, it's all bendy-ish. Yeah, the little video game effects for him as well. He doesn't have fist in it. This one, this one's a little bit all over the place. This one, I'm less inclined to be like, oh, yeah, you just swap the heads and it'll look good. Hmm, no, this, this one's a bit of a... A mess in and of itself. Again, reusing a body for the sake of reusing it. Yes, it's the Aquaman body. I get why they're doing that, but you gotta make some changes because every single Aquaman release, they still haven't done the ultimate Aquaman. They still haven't done the ultimate Nightwing. It's all that kind of jazz where they keep releasing the same characters, but they still aren't hitting 
that mark. So no, Aquaman, that's that's at the very bottom of the rung, let's just say, because it's just a, a no bueno overall. Is the head portrait with the windswept hair good? Is it good looking? Like if you put him in the water and you're like, oh, cool, I'll take a photo. Yes, it's fine if that's going to be the thing, but he ain't in water and you're not going to display him in water. So why? <laughs> <laughs> Why do it? And a lot of people are going to say, well, it's kind of like that in the video game. Not everything translates perfectly. Again, like I said, if you're going to do this windswept Farrah Fawcett hair, then you got to have an extra head portrait where it's down because then it just looks weird. <laughs> it's just constantly standing there. It's like every cologne perfume commercial in the last decade or so. No, this, this doesn't work. Don't, don't make excuses for this one. Batman, on the other hand, that, that's, I'm all about this Batman. I think this Batman, it looks cool. <laughs> 50 million Batman in the collection. I like the coloring. It's very much, let's say this, while it's supposed to be Justice League Task Force, kind of reminds me of the Batman game Dark Tomorrow, in a way. That's also a horrendously terrible video game that was on the GameCube. I was so excited for that game. And thankfully, I rented it at Blockbuster and quickly learned how awful it was. <laughs> and then years later, I found it at a garage sale and I was like, okay, I'll take this home now. But my God, yeah, that was that was pretty bad. Anyways, video game Batman. NECA Toys did it better, of course, with their 89 Batman video game. I'll totally agree with that. But I like the coloring. I like the cape. I like the blast effects that he has for his fists. And yes, he does have fists. So overall, I like this Batman. The grit and teeth look looks a little bit better. See, say this. It looks better in the photos. It looks to be the one that possibly came with the Bane set that has all the bloody mouth and he looked more like a zombie than anything. It looks like his lips are missing, perhaps without all that blood and the scuffage and everything else. It tends to look like this. Again, Extra head portraits would have been better. Does it match the video game? It matches the video game, I think, pretty much to a T, whereas you see the difference of Aquaman. Yes, you look at the artwork, you look at the video game, you're like, yeah, it's kind of like that. What works, what does in an action figure form? I like the large bat symbol on the chest. It works in the gaudiness of a 90s beat-em-up video game for the Justice League. So Batman all boxed up, ready to go. He's my favorite. He's my favorite of the way. But I'll tell you, my favorite, truth be told, is actually the Build-A-Figure, which is Dark Side, And he's got those video game colors, and he's all moody, and I like this. And we all knew this was coming. There's no medallion in the front. There's no cape, of course. And we can all agree. No one has to go, oh, I knew it. I knew they were going to do another one. We all know they're going to do another one. They're going to keep doing these till they can't do it no more. Yeah, we'll see a normal colors dark side eventually. Why wouldn't they do that? It's just dark side. People want this. But I like this video game rendition. And I can't wait for you to see the Platinum Edition version either. But I like the coloring on this. He looks sinister. He looks mean. We just got a caped superpowers dark side. What do you need with another build a figure dark side? Well, if you held off on that one, then this might be the one you want. But of course, you have to get through four yeah, kind of figures in order to get them. Ain't that always the way? McFarlane's always, you know what you're doing there. But dark side, yeah, he looks the best, of course. Just looks like that very villainous looking dark side that you love to have on your shelf. Now, it won't be for everyone because he has that video game shading, so I totally get that as well. But in terms of a 90s video game Justice League Task Force action figure line, it definitely meets those old requirements, and he does look the best out of everything. From the sculpts to the paint to everything else, that is pretty darn cool. So this wave is kind of a, you know, you know that kind of thing. It's like, yeah, some of it's good and some of it's pretty terrible and some of it I'm going to have to cobble and everything else. That's kind of the way McFarland Toys rolls sometimes. Not every wave is a winner. Although I will say this, I will have a look at the new Green Lanterns coming up from the collector's edition. Hands down, no spoilers for the videos. That is probably some of the best 
that they've ever done for the DC Multiverse line. I am thoroughly impressed. It's exactly what I would want to see for the collector's edition. We got rid of the dang card stand. We filled the box with all kinds of powers and hands and heads and everything else. But more on that in just a few. I'm curious to know you guys' thoughts about this Justice League Task Force line. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything DC Multiverse. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, where's Wonder Woman and Green Arrow? See, that's the problem when you get these subtle waves. And if this wave doesn't do well, which I've seen the comments, are we going to get Wonder Woman? Are we going to get Green Arrow? Are we going to see that completion of this game? I certainly hope so, because we need another Wonder Woman. People are missing Wonder Woman. We need a good Wonder Woman, a solid one. For those old DC Multiverse collections, McFarlane Toys. Come on, I know you can do it. When you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.